Oh, hello there, and uh, welcome to today's edition of GKU News. Let's get started with today's first story. Our first story today, a pack of rabid dogs were found pressing the Duke family yesterday. The animals positioned themselves in a very compact and organized 442 formation. They moved as one as the family showed visual cues of fear and confusion, trapping them wide to discourage any central penetration. Sadly, the Duke family did not survive the vicious attacks. On a lighter note, now on to our daily cooking demo. This week we'll be making a fruit smoothie. Now this is a super easy three-step recipe, so follow along. Step one is to delay by recovering centrally with all of your strawberries and slowing the attack. Be sure not to dive into any unnecessary tackles. Now for step two, you're going to want to deny any central penetration towards the goal by the blueberries. Lastly, step three is to dictate the direction of the attack by using your central positioning to force the blueberries wide into low percentage areas. And there you have it, folks, a delicious fruit smoothie. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. I'm just getting breaking news that last night there was an emergency defending situation in the hot zone. First responders framed the area around the goal in order to eliminate these highly dangerous attacks. In addition, the center medics made sure to cover the cutback space and remain connected to the line of detectives. The center deputy was advised in this situation to either frame the near post to discourage any driving attacks or to support their fellow detectives wide. Depending on the threatening position of the attack, the chief of police had to either position herself in the center of the goal or near post. These brave first responders put their bodies on the line through tackles, blocks, and slides to make sure nothing crosses that goal line and no scores were harmed. Now off to our reporter Hannah Wise who's on the scene with the transitional moment. Take it away Hannah. Hello this is Hannah Wise and today we will be talking about the defending to attacking phase. The first phase we will be talking about is the escape phase. During this phase, we want to escape into an open area of the field to give us the chance to penetrate the opposing team while they are disorganized. The second phase is to penetrate. During this phase, we want to find the open players, windows, and space so that we can push forward into the opposing team's defense. If you can't find those spaces, then this is where we circulate. You should never force the penetration phase. If you can't find a way to penetrate the opposing team's lines, this is where we circulate. We want to keep possession of the ball here. So, with the proper positioning of our supporting players, we should be able to move the ball around to give our team the proper time and space to kick ass. That's all for now, folks. Now here's Mike with the weather. Thanks, Hannah. Hi, this is weatherman Mike reporting to you live from GKU. Today's weather is currently raining. Stay tuned for this week's forecast. A few moments later. Hi, it's Mike. I'm in the studio today with the extended weather forecast for the week. Hold on, I'm getting a weather update. Alright guys, as you can see the storm is moving in fast. So here are some tips and tricks to surviving. First, you need to have proper body positioning and spacing in your homes. Secondly, the tighter the pressure or stronger the wind, you need to have more support from your neighbors. Third, position yourself in the windows. I know people tell you not to, but I want you to. Fourth, break lines with pressure. Five, skip lines when possible. And six, play to the open player, please. 
Alright guys, me again. Last update for the storm. Make sure you're deceptive so the storm cannot read you. Make sure you have quick combos so the storm cannot catch you. Aggressively penetrate the storm's back line. One player needs to go through one window while the ball goes through the other. Create an identity. Make sure you have numbers up against the storm. Change of pace so the storm has no chance and this will help wear down the storm. Go cards. Now to Gabby with traffic. Thank you, Michaela, for that awesome weather update. You are now here live with Gabby Cazellas in Akron, Ohio, as I'm going to be covering the traffic updates for today. And actually, I just got a call that I'm going to be covering the traffic updates from Louisville, Kentucky. Apparently, there is a rampant freight train running on campus, and we need to go check it out. This freight train is moving at increasingly high speeds and has no signs of slowing down. If you do not get out of her way, you will get hit. As you can see, there is a freight train moving at very high speeds going eastbound on Lynn Stadium. She is pressing very high, very hard, and because of this, we can now all squeeze the space and begin our repress. After our repress occurs, we then have the opportunity to get the ball wide to Raven because of our defending, because of the high speed of Delaney and the high pressure in our repress, we are then able to have another goal scoring opportunity in the final third. Not only is a freight train running loose on campus, but I also just got news of someone speeding just across the street at Traeger. Going southbound on Traeger, we have someone exceeding the speed limit by at least 30 miles an hour. Amari's speed and immediate reaction to recover and get her body behind the ball, as well as Anna's back press, is what speeds up the Bellarmine attacker and causes a turnover. Because of Amari's speed and Anna's back press, we are then able to recover and reorganize and regain possession. News is in that on the west side of Lynn Stadium, a brick house has fallen and barricaded the street. So be, please be careful as you are driving to Lynn because you might encounter a brick wall. As our repress gets broken, you see that the back three are dropping in unison with good body shape giving our midfield and the rest of the team time to recover back under the ball. Because of how organized we are, it makes it very, very difficult to break us down. We have just received an urgent call from Karen Ferguson Days, stating that there is a group of 23 girls sprinting northbound on South Florida Street, chanting, get on the bus, we move into an elite eight. And she states that there is no stopping them until they have absolutely done everything in their power to get to an Elite Eight. So not only today have we encountered a freight train, a speeding ticket, a brick wall, but we are now encountering a high-speed cop chase. As our repress gets broken, I love the reactions of every single girl on our team to do whatever they can to recover back and central to slow down the Virginia attack. And not only that, but we are constantly pressing, we are constantly forcing them to play around us and not through us, and finally ending with a pretty awesome 4-4-2 shape. As goalkeepers, our main objective throughout these four phases is to keep the ball out of the back of the net, communicate in a way that you guys understand, and support you in the best of our abilities. Our main objective should be to communicate and organize so that you guys can understand in a clear and concise way. Getting you guys to do things that you don't think that you can do. But also we are here to support and uplift you guys in any way that we can. And at the end of the day, our main objective is to keep the ball out of the back of the net, stay connected through communication and body shape, and support you guys as always. Thank you everybody for joining us for your first ever episode of GKU News with Hannah, Lana, Michaela, and myself. Be sure to tune in tomorrow on Channel One as we cover a groundbreaking story where Hunter Norton admits that goalkeepers are real soccer players. Hope to see you there.